shrouded by the mist of time. Pergamon is an archaeological marvel. Named after a Greek mythical hero, this settlement has been dated back to 2200 BC. This ancient ruin is located in Bergama, Turkey. This Hellenistic city was a hub for culture and learning. From Aristotle, Galen, and Hippocrates, this ancient city beckoned searchers of knowledge. Its ancient library held some of the greatest wisdoms in history. Over time, this ancient city was occupied by powerful empires such as Greece, Persia, and the Romans. Through their cultural influences, they shaped it into the rich metropolis that we still admire today. Pergamon was a hub of culture and scholarship. It had a huge theater. Its library provided scholarship for teachers and philosophers, and it had a magnificent gymnasium that also provided for medical treatments. Pergamon holds a very special place in history. The ancient city found its wealth in the production of wine, olives, and animal hides, all lucrative products that provided for a strong economy. Pergamon stands today as a testament to the power of ancient culture. In 546 BC, Cyrus of Persia launched a powerful campaign against Pergamon. With swift military might and surprising diplomacy, Cyrus established his authority. Cyrus of Persia was one of the most successful conquerors in the ancient world. His empire stretched from the Indus River in modern-day Pakistan to the Aegean Sea in Turkey. Pergamon's people experienced a newfound freedom under his rule. He removed taxes, respected their customs, their cultures, and their religions. In 362 BC, Alexander the Great eventually gained control of not only Pergamon, but the surrounding areas of the Aegean Sea by beating Cyrus in a bloody battle. Towering above the Tiber Valley, this ancient city saw several ferocious clashes between Romans and Macedonian troops. The Romans won a decisive victory in 133 BC. This momentous battle was the start of Roman rule over Pergamon. Standing here and gazing across this majestic plain, I see an ancient Roman ruin from the second century. I'm witness to the remnants of an ancient water canal from thousands of years ago. It contained flowing waters from nearby hills. Through expert engineering, it managed to transport water 45 kilometers or 28 miles using only water pressure of less than 1% without requiring any pumps. The city was supplied with fresh water by an intricate system of over 240,000 clay pipes. They ranged in length from one and a half to two and a half feet. It provided sustenance to this bustling community. I would love to go back in time and see it as a working city.
The Library of Pergamon was renowned throughout history. The kings of Pergamon invited the most acclaimed minds in art, philosophy, and medicine to live and study in the city. The library was only second to the Egyptian Library of Alexandria. If you can read, you probably owe a debt of gratitude to this library. In 41 BC, in a display of devotion or extreme stupidity, Roman commander Antonius gifted Cleopatra the entire library of Pergamon. All the manuscripts went to Egypt. Within a few years, they were all destroyed by fire when war broke out. So much world history lost. Pergamon's theater, built in the 2nd century BC, was a marvel with its awe-inspiring 80 rows of seats that could accommodate up to 10,000 people. At a remarkable 54-degree incline, it captivated audiences because it was the steepest theater of ancient times. The front rows were for state officials and other dignitaries. They were adorned with beautiful marble. However, the rear seats were made with andesite stone, in essence, the cheaper seats. This ancient Roman theater is remarkable for its lack of a built stage. During theatrical performances, stagehands would place set pieces in small stone cutouts which would allow for a variety of different backgrounds, much like theater is done today. Unfortunately, Pergamon's prosperity started to fade when Augustus Caesar named Ephesus as the capital of Asia Minor. The city suffered further damage from natural disasters, such as earthquakes, and it came to an abrupt end in the 14th century when it was overtaken by the Ottoman Empire. In subsequent years, little was left of what had existed there. Set in the ancient city of Pargamon, a temple stood tall. Built directly over the river Selenus, it had magnificent marble tiles adorning the roof and walls. This grand structure was used to worship the Egyptian god of Serphus and Isis. This majestic temple had two towers with a height of 19 meters or 62 feet and a grand entrance with gates that measured 14 by 7 meters or 46 feet high and 23 feet in width. An imposing church from the Byzantine existed in the courtyard, looming above two colossal towers, one of which was later converted to an Ottoman mosque. This site shines light on the countless intertwining layers of history within these ancient lands. These people and their stories, living their lives and dreams, both good and bad, we're no different than we are now, today. Bergama, Turkey has managed to preserve its historical sites, making it a true world treasure. What a spectacle this must have been. An enormous structure with goods sold from all over the known world, goods from Egypt and Africa, India and China, Europe and the Black Sea. 
It was the equivalent to living in New York City, Los Angeles, and London combined. Bergma, an ancient city with a history going back to the Bronze Age, is still alive and bustling. This ancient city holds much of the world's history. It invites curious explorers to discover its hidden secrets. Exploring Bergma's cobblestone streets is to time travel through history. From the friendly smile of a local to the loving welcome of an affectionate dog, you will be warmly greeted and introduced to this city's old world charm. As you pass the storefronts, there shines a treasure trove of trinkets, jewelry, and handmade carpets. They are a visual feast for your eyes. My good friend is a modern pioneer of today's Turkeya. He hails from an ancient olive farming family who have tilled this land since Roman times. Embracing both tradition and progress, he is bringing his centuries-old wisdom to bear as he creates his own brand of olives straight from his family's ancestral soils in order to energize the new Turkey of today. Your family has been farming for 700 years. Give me a little history of the family. My mom's grand-grandfathers uh, have been living here approximately for the last 700 years, as you told. If someone asks them, uh, can you express yourself? He is going to express himself in a way that agriculture is the way of my living. After two generations of my family, uh, I have returned to soil. Three years ago, you say, yeah. you, you started back again. I decided to have my own olive trees and started to bought some fields, tried to make my own olive oil. So you came back in and you updated. You have brought the family business after 700 yeah, years. I feel myself blessed. My mom's family have always expressed itself with agriculture. And for the last 40 or 45 years, they have been doing nothing about agriculture. Now I am holding the flag of my ancestors. I've come to know that success is when you believe in yourself. What have we got to eat here? This is seafood spaghetti. Seafood spaghetti? Yeah, we are in a, a location which is famous with its uh, ancient ruins. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, too many uh, foreigners here. Maybe uh, some of them wouldn't like to have some local tasters. That's why we try to have some global tasters. Let me try it right here. Mm. I think it's smoked one. I love the smoked one. Yeah. Absolutely. Tell me about the olive. After the pandemic, uh, people, most of the people in the world try to uh, pay much more attention to their nutrition abilities. Mm -hmm. Olive oil is one of the strong health caring goods uh, in the world. We try to make this olive the purest olive in the world. That will help us to get the purest olive oil in the world. This is the uh, olive harvest time. It starts uh, at the beginning of the September and uh, it goes until the end of the December. Our main objective is to pick them from the trees when they are all green in order to get high polyphenol values because high polyphenol values then it's a medicine. It will help people to make their body much more healthier. That's pressed. Yeah, oil. you don't uh, cold press it, it's nothing. But if it is cold pressed, it's a medicine. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Great to hear.
And do, do people pick them by hand? By hands, or sometimes uh, the uh, farmers try to use some uh, vibration uh, machines. Shaking? Yeah, shaking. Shaking. Mm -hmm. the, the tree starts to give flowers at first. Mm -hmm. That flowers uh, has a long way to go uh, until it becomes this piece of product, this olive. The village people call it a uh, tree of the immortality. Ah. Because, of its, because of its product, the yeah, olive and the, the olive oil. oil. And this thing is full of oil inside of it. And you can easily feel the mm, oily. This is the best care. for your skin yeah, care. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Coming back from the land that has sustained his family for more than 700 years and producing the fruit that has sustained countless people for centuries. With his enterprising spirit, his future is bright, and with people like him, Turkeya's future is shining. Please like and subscribe Join us as we show you the world. These are my last looks.